Yes. Yep, we appear to be recording now. And, yeah. and are we public? Can people see us? Do you know how that works? If you don't see an option to turn on the broadcast, then I would assume we are already we've been on. We've been broadcasting from day one. Okay. All right, so we should yeah. be public then. Yeah, there, are, there are three attendees. So. Right, right. Um, okay, so I'll kick this meeting off. Um, and oh, Jonathan, we don't have Jonathan here. Who, who are we missing? Okay. There he is. It must have been traffic. <laughs> Maybe in his office. Good morning, Jonathan. Good morning. Are you in your office? I think he is. He is in his office. He can't do a virtual background like that. <laughs> He's high tech. We're also missing Rupert. Ah, uh, yeah. He should be here in like two seconds. Okay. Three seconds. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to start previewing the agenda. So what we want to do on the agenda is um, Call to order, we have selection of the chair and vice chair. And uh, to begin that, um, I'm, I've asked Jonathan, who had just served as chair of the Fort River Building Committee, to talk a little bit about what does being chair mean, and that will set the stage for the next conversation. Um, uh, Mike has shared out the maintenance report uh, yesterday, I think, and we can walk through that. Um, we'll get an update on the enrollment uh, discussions. Um, I don't think we sent out, did we send out minutes in advance or we can put that off to next next week? Um, I sent the minutes to Angela, but I didn't send them soon enough that yeah. she could get it to the committee. Yeah, so so. We'll, we'll, we'll just put those on for next week or next time we meet. And then we'll talk about our, our meeting schedule. So, good morning, Rupert. Um, so let's, let's start, be efficient, so we can move on with the rest of our days as well. Um, so Jonathan, in terms of one of our first tasks here, and I think everybody's gotten sworn in, woo -hoo. Um, One of our first tasks is to um, elect a chair and a vice chair. And uh, if you could just talk about what does it mean to be a chair, because you, you're the one who's done most recently. I'm not sure if Mike or Sean had ever, were you ever chair of a committee? So Mike, so you might want to weigh into Mike or who, um, just in terms of what it means to be chair. So sure. Jonathan, you want to start? Can you make sure you can hear me? You can hear me? Great. Yep. Um, so I, I, the first thing to know is that it's, it's not a life sentence. I wasn't actually chair for the whole, <laughs> the whole time, but about partway through, um, the, the former chair couldn't do it any longer. And I had stepped forward and, and folks, uh, 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 elected me as chair. Um, you know, the primary duty is to, to just that chair the meetings, um, keep the meetings moving, uh, make sure things like the agendas are posted ahead of time, the meetings are posted ahead of time. Um, I'm trying to, th you know, try to think of the, 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 the biggest points. Um, there is extra work. It, it, it is a bit more than being just an ordinary member of the, the committee. Uh, during, you know, once we have consultants, whether that's an owner's project manager or the architects eventually, you you are typically the the um, the you know off meeting day contact for those folks. So if they if they have a question, um, if they want to put forward an agenda item, they're going to contact you. Uh, you know, typically, you're also the conduit for com communication uh, to the rest of the committee, so that, every, that to ensure that everybody knows all there is to know. So that if you know one member uh, has something to communicate, it goes through the chair to others. Uh, oftentimes, um, I'm trying to think of the, we, on our committee, we shared out the tasks of uh, doing meeting minutes uh, so that, that that burden wouldn't necessarily fall just to the chair because uh, that is a, that is a sometimes a heavy lift with a busy schedule. Um, and we would probably want to talk about how we're going to handle the, the recording and posting of minutes as part of this committee. Um, 
I suppose those are the highlights I'm recalling now. If I if I think of something else, I'll, I'll be sure to pipe up. Mike, is there, what, what did you want to add? Yeah, so I think the, the only thing I'd add, I think Jonathan did a great description. Uh, two pieces. One is that um, there, there would be some frequency of uh, communication with MSBA um, because it is an MSBA project. So um, that's, that is another task that would fall to the chair. And, and Jonathan mentioned it, but I do think it's also important. However, the, the democratic process is about setting agendas. The chair does have some role um, in setting agendas and keeping things moving. So, um, you know, that, that's, uh, that is a real task. And, and especially my experience last time is as the process moves forward, there may be uh, really important tangents that committee members want to have. And so there, there is a tension point in what do we choose to talk about as a committee? Uh, because it can't be everything. There's way too many things happening once you get, you know, consultants on deck to, um, you, you would meet every, for four hours every day. So uh, I agree with Jonathan. It is uh, a real task. Um, you know, I did enjoy doing it last time in, in many ways. Um, but it is something that, um, you know, someone has to be willing to put in extra hours, extra work. And, and a lot of that's really around communication. I would say that is the most critical component that the chair has to play both in the meeting and then between meetings, coordination and communication. So are there any questions anybody has from for either Mike or Jonathan about what the role of the chair is or what the time commitment is or anything like that? I could probably be so bold as to say it was, it was easily, uh, a, you know, eight hours of, of work, you know, uh, spread between the two weeks between we between meetings, so maybe four hours a week of, of that kind of communication effort. So um, since I'm the appointing authority and I'm not a candidate for chair, I'm going to conduct this uh, election. And, and here's how we'll do it. First, we'll ask for nominations. Um, and you don't need, there doesn't need to be a second for there to be a nomination. You can nominate yourself, you can nominate someone else. And then we'll, once when the nominations are finished and we may have, you know, 12 nominations, who knows, um, then we'll just go around um, and ask people who you vote for. And, um, and then we'll do the same process um, for vice chair. Um, or what actually the people who have been nominated can, can, they can say if they accept the nomination. Um, and then uh, if they do, then we'll put their name down as being possible to vote for. And then uh, we'll go around name by name and you'll say, I vote for so-and-so. Uh, and then we'll do the same thing for vice chair, the same process. Does that make sense to everybody? Is that clear? Okay. So floor is now open for nominations. I know that uh, Steve has expressed a, a desire to me that, that he might like to chair this committee. I don't know if he still has that desire. I will say that I, I don't have the time to commit to it myself now. Okay. So Steve, you've been nominated. Do you accept the nomination? Sure. Thanks. Okay. Any other nominations? Don't be bashful. Kathy. Okay. So you said we can self nominate also. Okay. I, I would be willing to be chair as well. Okay. Good. Thank you. And other nominations. Oh, that eight hours, a, uh, eight hours a week, Jonathan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <but people> off. <laughs> maybe other people would be more efficient about it, but it, it's, that's what it seemed to take for me to, to, to put the stuff together. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. So are there any other nominations? Um, so Kathy or Steve, do you want to say anything about, I'll start with um, Steve. Do you want to say anything about why? Yeah, so I would be honored to serve in that role. So I did watch Jonathan in action during the Fort River process, and I think he did a you know extraordinary job. I could never fill his shoes or Mike Morris's shoes or any of the other people that have, that have chaired these kinds of committees. But I think that the particular expertise I bring is as an architect. So the, this project is about the design and construction of a building. So the things that Jonathan was describing, communicating with MSBA, communicating with the consultants, first the OPM, then you know who knows how long this process will take, but first the OPM. Uh, those are things, those are languages that are 
that I speak, and I think that I can do a good job in communicating those to the rest of the committee. And then also I have experience chairing public committees. I was chair of the planning board in Amherst. I was chair of the architecture registration board in Massachusetts, you know, et cetera. So I would be honored to, you know, serve as your chair. I think you have two great candidates here, both whose last names start with SCH. Makes it easy. And Kathy? Uh, hi. Um, I also would be honored to serve, and I realize it is a lot of work. And one of the reasons I wanted to be on the committee is because I'm eager to jump into this project and have followed the other two. I'm trained as an economist, so Steve has the architecture side. I have the um, try to ask questions and uh, love to look at detailed information, including budgets, and think about the whole picture. I, in terms of chairing experience, I have chaired committees in town. I'm JCPC chair, but I think more importantly, my prior life before I ran for council uh, was on health policy at the national level. And I had to chair large commissions um, that had active public uh, speaking engagements. And I think one of the things that we're gonna have to do is communicate well with the outside community um, be able to answer questions, um, anticipate when we're making decisions so that we know people know what our options are. And I've had a lot of experience doing that, trying to keep the agenda, put the agendas together and keep things moving, but also be thinking we're representing a large body of people, not just ourselves. Okay, so you know it's interesting because this group we don't really know each other that well. Right. Sort of, you know, so it's an odd sort of situation here. And two of my bosses have been nominated, which is <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Um, so we'll we'll just take uh, you know again. I think as Jonathan said, this is not a life sentence, so we'll vote this and then see how it works out. So I'm just going to call on names. It's going to be awkward for you folks to just choose um, based on what you know, and I'm going to just go through my my screen. Um, the way I see people. So, um, Diane. Sorry, we don't have the same tricks for unmuting in the in Zoom as we do for Google Meet. So, um, I, I'm I'm sorry, I don't know either one of you. So, I'm going to take a take a stab in the dark and go, Kathy. <laughs> uh, Jonathan. I'll go with Steve. Okay. Uh, Phoebe. Um, I will also go Kathy. Okay. Uh, Allison? Kathy. Um, Rupert? Um, I'll go with Steve. Okay. Um, Anthony? Councilor Schreiber. Okay. Uh, Ben? You're muted, Ben. I'm going with Kathy. Okay. Uh, Mike? I will abstain. <laughs> I'm so glad you didn't call me first because I think I might have started a trend. So uh, good job on that one, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> Sean? If, if allowable, I will also abstain since it's two of my boss's bosses. <laughs> okay. Okay, so the way, and then I haven't voted yet, but I think I have one, two, three, four for Kathy, one, two, three for Steve. Is that accurate? Is that the read? Okay. You haven't called on Dwayne yet. Oh, Dwayne, I'm sorry. You are Pennsylvania, Dwayne. I know, right? I'll go for Kathy as well. <laughs> okay. Oh, well, you just made, it, made everything so easy, Dwayne. Thank you. <laughs> so Kathy now has five votes and Steve has three, the way I count. Anthony, has that match up? Good. Okay, and so I will abstain as well um, uh, out of deference to my leadership. So Kathy is our chair. Uh, um, yes. That question you just asked me makes me wonder if you think I'm taking minutes right now. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, we did not establish that, did we? No. And are you able to for this? Um, am I being voted as secretary? Is that what this is? <laughs> am I ta am I taking them once now and forever? Uh, let's let's take it for today, and then okay. we'll get to we'll cross that bridge. I think that's one of the tasks that Cher will be leading us on. Okay. Um, so, Kathy, do you want to lead the next um, for the vice chair? Uh, yes. Um, so, I, in my newly acquired role, I call for nominations for vice chair. Um, and Sean. And nominate Steve Schreiber for vice chair. Any other nominations? So the only thing I was wondering is that if it made sense for the superintendent to serve in a role at this level. Um, and I would actually defer that to Mike to say, is this just, you know, does this make sense in terms of the committee to have you in a role for the MSBA? Because I think this is a role with the MSBA. And does, he, does that make sense or not? Because I think Steve, either it doesn't really make that much difference to me. Yeah, I really, I think it could work either way. Um, I'm happy to be involved, you know, just being the conduit to the district. MSBA is going to have conversations with me and, and that'll continue regardless of whether I'm vice chair or not. Um, so really I defer to the chair of the committee, how she would want to, uh, as well as Steve, how, the, how that would work. But uh, just because I will continue to be the representative of the district and, and some things are full committee and some things are a direct communication with the district, um, really whatever the chair and the committee would like to do is fine. I'm, I'm okay doing it, I'm okay deferring it, whatever. So whether, whether, you're vice, whether you're vice chair or not, it's sort of irrelevant is what you're saying. Yeah, I mean, it just, it's a really about how the chair wants the communication flow to be, but um, you know, for instance, enrollment, which we'll talk about in a couple of minutes, that, that is a function of the district. Okay. Um, and so uh, it's really up to the chair and the committee how they want okay. to do it. Okay, so uh, Steve is nominated. Are there any other nominations, self or otherwise? Okay. I'm um, sorry. That no, that, that's, a, that's quite all right. <laughs> that's quite all right, Paul. I was waiting for that conversation to close. Um, so hearing no other nominations, um, if we only have one candidate, um, I think we have a vice president. We can go around the room and vice president, vice chair. Um, I wish we had a vice president right now. Um, but uh, so do we need to go around the room? Phoebe. Can I just ask a question um, in terms of flow of information um, uh, with what Mike was just saying and Paul, what you just brought up, does it, I guess my question is, is it more helpful to have uh, Mike sort of in dual roles for both district and the committee? Um, is it duplication of work if he's not? I guess I just wanna understand that a little bit more. Okay, Mike, you. Yeah, so, uh, you know, I think Phoebe's point's a good one. It probably is a little bit of duplication of work. Um, it's not untenable duplication of work, but it would it would uh, probably require me to meet with Kathy and Steve more regularly so that both the vice chair and chair in terms of the leadership of this committee are kept abreast of, of conversations between the district and MSBA. So it's not that I don't think it can happen, but I think Phoebe's point is well taken that it, it would duplicate some work. So could I just... Um get so mike you're saying that if you weren't vice chair you're going to have to be meeting with us anyway and if you were vice chair you'd be having to meet with us and, oh, oh, but i'm trying to see where they're where because the things you're going to have to do no matter what um yeah. big um and then you're also on the committee yeah deep yeah so normally the main role of the vice chair is to serve as chair if the uh, if the right. chair cannot, so really I'm the understudy, I would be the understudy, yeah. Kathy and I would do any duties that as assigned by Kathy. So Mike's relationship to Kathy as chair will remain and I'm basically the understudy and w assuming that, that, this, um, that there's no recount. Um, <laughs> uh, no, that's the way I would think about it too. Yeah, yeah. So, so I, I don't see the vice chair as a position that would complicate what we've already decided. Yeah. Mike. So yeah, I think that's true. I think the and, and I'm not advocating for the role or against you, Steve. Please know that that's not the case. I think it really depends on how the chair wants to organize the committee. So in some committees, the vice chair, probably like vice president, to use Kathy's reference earlier, the, the vice chair 
plays a role in setting agendas, uh, being involved in that. And that's probably the piece that I may have some insights to just because of communication with MSBA. Um, that doesn't have to be in the role of vice chair. And it really depends on how the chair wants to utilize that role, whether it's, it's the, the, the pinch hitter that comes in time to time or plays a more active role in, in agenda setting. And, and that's not a preference for one or the other. Um, Kathy, that's obviously at your discretion. I'm not advocating for the role as vice chair, but I think that's perhaps where the duplication, minor duplication comes in. Again, I don't think it's untenable. I'm totally comfortable no, not being the vice chair, but I just, I think Phoebe's question was a good one. Um, and I just wanted to be transparent about that. No, and just um, my sense of chair and vice chair is what Steve just described. You know, in um, I'm vice chair of the finance committee for the council. But that mainly means that Andy relies on me to, when we're drafting a report, to be a reader and a contributor to it. He's the one who's meeting regularly with Paul and Sean to figure out agendas on what's coming up, rather than um, it being that the vice chair goes out and is agenda setting in the same way. I mean, we're all, we're all I'm hoping that we'll all contribute to what we're talking about each time. So it's not just a vice chair, it is all committee members. So, I'm, so I guess we're back to, do we have one nomination for vice chair or not? Um, and I, I think we've heard Mike say, I, I wasn't sure whether you said you didn't want it, Mike, um, or whether we have just one. Um, so do we have just one nomination at this point? I think yes. So then do I just on procedure, do I need to go around the room? Um, yes, okay, so I will just go around the room and I'm looking at the order of people on my screen. So uh, Phoebe, I guess this is a yes or no, <laughs> yeah. Right. I was just gonna ask that, um, sure, yes. Uh, Allison, Sean, Yes. Ben, ben, Steve, Anthony, aye. Rupert, yes. Mike, yes. Jonathan, yes. Diane, yes. And Dwayne, yes. Okay, bye. Um, bye. Uh, oh, and Paul, Paul, I, I jumped at you. <laughs> okay, and I am a yes. So it's a unanimous vote for vice chair. So Paul, you originally listed our agenda for the day. I don't know whether um, there's something we can show up on the screen or you just want to go through the items because we should start with the first on your list of agenda. Yeah, so I think the maintenance report is, is next. I think Mike sort of shared that out. And do you have the ability to share your screen, Mike? Mike, you're muted. I believe so. Um, let me, I'm not sure. I mean, it's a long report. I'm not sure, and, and Rupert wrote it, so uh, <laughs> I'm not sure. Uh, actually, I know I am not the uh, the expert on this one. It was more just updating that this was a report due at the end of last month, uh, a submission to the MSBA that was uh, fully on the part of the district, not on the part of the, the larger committee, just to update the MSBA and current maintenance conditions. Um, so Rupert or Ben, I don't know if you have um, more to share on that, um, but it was, it was really much more an FYI. We wanted to make sure the committee was aware that this was submitted uh, than um, probably uh, going through point by point. But if Rupert and Ben have more to add, uh, certainly defer to them. Is there anything more to add, Rupert? Ben? Um, it's pretty much a statement of what is. Um, I'm happy to discuss uh, any of the answers. Um, there are a few answers that I wish, uh, you know, um, I could have, because some of this is used uh, for um, um, fine tuning how many points we get uh, from the committee. Um, but it's, you know, it's accurate, it's current, and um, I think it's, uh, it's a fair representation. Uh, but I'm happy to answer any questions now or in the future. Um, are there any questions? I know we got it. Um, 
late, I think we got it late yesterday or yesterday. So I think if there are any questions, if there people don't have them now and they read it later, uh, just we, we can send them to me and I'll make sure we get them, get answers to them. Uh, seeing no hands, um, I think we'll go to the next agenda item then. And is that the enrollment report, Paul? Is that what you have? Um, yeah, it's an, uh, it's an update on, on okay. enrollment discussions with the uh, MSBA, and I think Superintendent Morris is on top of that. Sure. So um, we submitted uh, multiple data, piece of data they asked for. They come up with estimates. We, you know, it is uh, back and forth on future estimates. It, it is particularly complicated right now. I will note um, our district has had a pretty significant decline in enrollment this year. Uh, MSBA is aware that many districts are facing a decline in enrollment. Um, it's hard to exactly know how to calculate that. We just I shared last night with the school committee. We, we surveyed families who have left the district. Um, so um, we, um, we know that some families plan to come back and some don't who, who, are, who are not with us this year. And so, you know, it is a complicated uh, thing of how to, how to look at enrollments. The other thing that I want to share is that the MSBA has shared with uh, both Paul and myself that they really are looking at this as um, things that, that could be ready to go in terms of different enrollments. So you all remember uh, about a year and a half ago, which feels like, you know, eight years ago, uh, that, you know, there was a lot of public input and feedback into looking at a school that was no larger than 600 students. Uh, and there was broad consensus on that. You know, one of the options I was looking at is if sixth grade to the middle school, went to the middle school, could that um, that happen? You know, that's a fully school committee decision, or in this case, school committee's decisions um, that, that could happen. It wouldn't be a financial implication. and It could happen, frankly, uh, relatively quickly. When it comes to things like, for instance, regionalization with Pelham, which was off the table, and then there's been a little murmurs of in Pelham, uh, the MSP has been clear with us that really, if we're looking to have a process that studies enrollments on things that are that hypothetical, um, then then maybe we should sit out the process and, and reapply next year. They're looking for districts who are ready to move, uh, who are ready to look at enrollments that are achievable, um, that have broad, have community consensus and could be realized. Um, if for districts who want to look at um, 12 different options based on uh, unknown variables, um, they said that's really, you should have that sorted out before you apply, not so much now that you're in the process. So we're still awaiting, we've had five conversations, four conversations, Paul's been in most of them. Um, some town staff were, uh, I'm trying to think of the town employee who was there, Paul, you'll remind me better than me at one of them. I think it was looking at uh, future developments. Our senior. Yeah. Um, our senior planner, Nate Bloy, because we look at, at projected them. Yeah. yeah. And so uh, we're awaiting a letter from them, which will uh, suggest the enrollments that they approve us for study. And I think that's really important distinction. Uh, it's not just that we get to choose whatever we want to study. Uh, it, it's uh, much more explicit um, than that, that we proposed some things, we shared some information, and they, they will offer us uh, enrollments that, uh, that we can study. And so we're, we're hoping for that in the next week or two, probably by the time we meet the next time, uh, we'll, we'll have received that letter. Um, and, you know, we'll let you know, you know, I'll communicate out when I receive the letter with the full committee through Kathy, uh, what they're suggesting. But that's sort of where we are. It's a lot of conversation, a lot of questions, for instance, like, you know, we're looking at, you know, they, they look at the existing schools and they want to know how many rooms do you need for special ed? And in our situation, we, we typically need more rooms for special ed because we have more specialized programs than the average district. Uh, another one that comes up a lot is uh, how many classrooms do you need for X number of students? And so their banking, you know, their estimates are based typically on 25 students per class. There's zero classrooms in our elementary school district, and there has been that have 25 class, 25 students in a classroom because we have a schools, we have a class size policy that the school committee passed many years ago that we follow that doesn't allow for that. So that's the kind of nuances that we have had conversations about with the MSBA. Um, again, I feel, and, and Kathy and Steve, if you're interacting with some in the future, I find that they're incredibly professional uh, and easy to work with. So that, that's the good thing. And you know, as we get more information, we'll share it out with the larger committee and community. Um, so, so Mike, I, I have one question, but I wanna see if other people have questions before I ask my question. Paul? 
So I just, for context, I think for the committee, Mike, if you could sort of say, these are the, the maintenance report and the enrollment piece are two pieces of, a, of the groundwork that we're laying for why we're moving forward. Can you put, give some context on why these two pieces of, of in, in information are important? Yep. So the maintenance uh, report, uh, why the MSBA wants that is a, a couple, couple different reasons. One is they've come in and done their analysis, but they also want to get updates on what the current conditions of the building um, conditions are. You know, for Fort River, for instance, we've actually had some pretty significant changes since we got into this process. Um, pretty significant construction project that occurred this summer. Um, so they want to get a, a lay of the land. They also, it's also important because they use this report to calculate uh, maintenance reimbursement points. Um, so we get reimbursed a certain rate, and that's a more complicated conversation probably than for today. Um, but part of that is based on the maintenance that's happened. You know, they're, they're looking for districts who are actively maintaining their buildings and doing a good job with that because it gives them confidence that uh, in a new or renovated building that comes that the building will be maintained at the same high level. So th that's the twofold for that one. On the enrollment, it really defines what this committee can study, uh, to be very blunt about it. So it, we can study what's approved to be studied uh, as part of our feasibility study. There are enrollments that are not approved by MSBA. Um, that can't be part of this project. It won't be funded in the end. So. Um, that is something, one of the reasons we spent so much time last year or two years ago, whatever it was, trying to get community input and the why they're looking at a tremendous amount of data um, is at the end of the day, they have to tell us you can study these two enrollments or these four enrollments or these five enrollments. And that boxes us in to study um, really just those enrollment. Um, and it might be, you know, based on if there's six grades at the middle school, it could be based on whether, you know, we continue to have three elementary schools in Amherst or two. Um, and so that's the reason why that's a pretty high stakes decision uh, for them and why they're taking quite a while to look at all the data. I mean, I, we joke, I joke with them, we have more data on our schools than any other district that's ever been in the pipeline, I feel like. We have now studies on Wildwood, Fort River, and now Crocker Farm. Um, so we've shared all of that information with them. We've shared the, the sixth grade to the middle school, the, middle, you know, the grade span advisory. I mean, all, we've literally probably a thousand pages of data has been shared with them and they're combing through it all to make their best determination of what they're comfortable with us studying. Um, and that's, that's, will have impact. It will set the charge for this group. So are there any questions or comments? Cause I have one, but I want to wait to see if there are any in the larger group. Okay. My question is Mike, um, in what you've submitted is, is that something the rest of us should at least be aware of and see? Um, so is it filed somewhere? And to the extent people are uh, willing to wade through a thousand pages of documents, but at least so that we all have the same framework. Um, that's question number one. And then the second on the sixth grade decision, um, is am I right in understanding you saying that we might, they might, we might be in a position that we could be looking at two possible enrollment scenarios that we wouldn't have to make that decision right away. We could say, if the sixth grade doesn't move up, this is how many people have. If the sixth grade moves up, this is how many. It, so we would have at least two scenarios we'd be looking at. So those are my two questions. One is get the get the thousands of pages. Can we can we all have it, or can we have a place on our website, you know, for the, the committee meetings that to simp that it's loaded up? And then the second is, you know, the the kind of decision we're expecting back. Sure. Yeah. And what I can share with the committee is both the enrollment submission that we had to do, which um, is not very long. Uh, it's just a, it's a form that we fill out, uh, and I'll make sure I get that to folks today. Uh, the thousands of pages are all public documents, so absolutely I can send the hyperlinks to all the studies that were submitted. Um, so yeah, by the end of the week, for sure, I'll get that to the full committee. Okay. Uh, and oh, your second question, yes, there will be more than one. Um, almost every project has more than one uh, enrollment number studied. Um, now, I think in some, frankly, in some communities, that's more checking a box that suggests that you're looking at things when you're not really. I think in this community, my personal opinion is, from the district level, we actively would be looking at multiple uh, enrollments in exactly the way you say. So uh, I would just, I'll say, I will be shocked if uh, the MSBA does not offer at least two enrollments for us to study because, somewhat because of that sixth grade piece that you talked about earlier. Okay. 
Are there any other questions on the enrollment? Um, and, and when, I guess, and my last would be is um, your best guess of when we hear back um, from them? Um, I think if we're, if we're gonna stay with a every two or three week meeting schedule, I think we, I would expect to hear back from them before our next meeting. That's okay. my understanding. Okay, thank you. Paul? Um, so next time as chair, I will know what the agenda is, I promise. Oh, isn't it posted? <laughs> yeah, no, I, I just don't have it in front okay. of me. Uh, yeah, um, so minutes is what's next. We're going to defer that to next time. Um, and then uh, we have the other things are a public comment and adjourn. Or next meeting and future meeting schedule, uh, public comment and adjourn. Okay, can I, um, at this point, I would like to say whether we could also um, take any, since I didn't have a role in the agenda, can I add just any suggestions from the committee for things they'd like to see on the next agenda or they hope we discuss or some preview of, of when the next meeting is and what possible items will be on it. So we expect, I have that we'll expect we'll get the enrollment report. MSBA enrollment back. Um, so can I put an agenda item on that would be a quick go around in the committee or should I do public comment first? Paul. So, um, well, I, I think we should talk about the agenda items for next time. And I think, you know, anybody, we shouldn't be setting the agenda at a public meeting. I think people should funnel them to you uh, yeah. as chair. Yeah. Um, but since we are at a public meeting, uh, what I'd like to see is uh, going forward is sort of a more a little bit of a work plan for what's our schedule type thing. You know, if we are going to do it every two week schedule or whatever it is, um, and you'll have to look at the holiday schedule as well and see how it fits in. And and I think you know it might be one of these things where we meet more frequently or less frequently at the beginning and then more frequently at a different time. But it'd be helpful for me to see what our milestones are um, in this process for, to look at for next next time we meet. Yeah, that was what I was going to suggest also. We, we had a request for one of our co-counselors um, on a council that um, we identify what some key decisions are going to be that the committee will be making. Um, and in advance of that, be able to share that either with the council before the decision is made. So it would be, Paul, it's the same way of saying key milestones. Yeah. Um, so that we just look at them on best guess on when those might happen um, and when we're going to be talking about them. That was the only, I thought a better sense of the workflow would be great just for next time. And the only other thing I, I had, it's not an agenda item, um, I had sent you a note, Paul. I think it would be good to the extent people are willing to, do, to look at the study that was done of uh, Fort River and the uh, the original study for Wildwood. So we at least for Wildwood, it was the whole building project, but that we have links to those, Mike, just so that we can go and to the extent people haven't already looked at them, that we all have that as our background information when we're going into the new project. So just links, not, not as a uh, homework assignment. Okay, so um, we don't have minutes, so we do have some attendees, and I, at this point, would throw this open for public comments, and I see one hand ID, um, so I'm not host, and I have a second, there are two hands up. Um, so, Aunt, who is in control, Paul, are you in control of, okay. So as you, as you're called on, um, ID is now joining us. Would you please tell us who you are, where you live? ID, you... Hi, you, sorry. Hi. This is Irene Dujovne. Hi. Um, yeah. My name is Irene Dujovne. I'm um, president of Amherst. I was member of two of the committees mentioned before, the Fort River School Building Committee and the Middle School um, Study. Uh, and I had two comments. One, I appreciate Kathy's mentioning the links to previous um, works that is public and you have a look at it so that 
Jonathan is not there, and Anthony, they know that was very well, but uh, so that everybody's up to speed um, on the on the Fall River at least. Mike, I had a question about the middle school report about, um, I know that we never, was it ever presented to the school committee? I don't think it was ever presented, the, the, the middle school study. And I don't know if just something's gonna be done in the near future. I know that the pandemic caught us in the middle and I think it was never presented. And then I would urge you to start working on the RFQ, the request for um, the paperwork for the request for the OPM. Um, my memory um, last time in the Fort River School Committee that we had several iterations of meetings before we had the full document to send out. Even we, we started working, we didn't do an OPM, but we did um, for the architects. Even if we didn't have all the details, we started working and then afterwards in the last Maybe meeting, we fill some of the details as they go, go approving, but we had a couple of rounds on this. So I wouldn't wait until we have all the details to start working. Maybe this is micromanaging and I apologize for that. But my suggestion is it takes several iterations, so the earlier you can start working on the paperwork, uh, the best. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Um, do we still have another hand up? There's another hand, Paul, Bruce. Hey, Bruce, you've been brought in. You can unmute. Um, I just want to introduce myself to you all. Some of you know who I am, uh, Bruce Coldham. I'm a resident in uh, town and I'm a retired architect who ran a business and the business still runs, of course, but I'm not part of it. Um, I was uh, very actively involved in the uh, in the in the last round, uh, not as a member of the committee, but as an interested citizen, and I just wanted to uh, tell everybody that I would like to continue in that role, or I will. Um, the role that I let, uh, put out for myself last time was to support the process, particularly in relation to getting the very best uh, daylighting into the school classrooms. Um, uh, we, uh, I had uh, supported the committee last time right up to the point of uh, making uh, daylighting models and showing it to the committee using the, uh, the plans that uh, the previous Hartford architects had developed and uh, working well was set to support that effort and we had some quite interesting ways in which we could uh, achieve that. I am very uh, interested in having this new building uh, presuming a building that we make have the very best daylighting particularly in the classrooms and uh, I'll support uh, all of you in uh, achieving that and, and whatever other technical goals that I can. I have time, I'm retired, I have energy and uh, I have commitment to this and I have four grandchildren in the, uh, in the district. So uh, you'll be hearing from me and I'll be helping you as best I can. Um, so Thank you and congratulations, Kathy and uh, Steve. That's it from me. Thank you, Bruce. And thank you for the offer. I don't see any other hands up. So I think um, that's it for public comments. So do we, do we have a date for the next meeting? So I, I think, um, do we need to do polling for a date or can we make a decision on dates right now? Some possible dates. I think we've established the time as a 7.30 in the morning on a Wednesday slot works for everyone. So it's a question of which next 7.30 slot we pick. Yes, Paul. Okay, Diane, I, I don't have a hand raised, but, but Diane had her hand up before me, I think. Okay, Diane. I don't mean to make it difficult, but actually I skip a Wednesday standing meeting to come to this meeting. So I don't know if there's any way to rotate not always being Wednesday. As I know as far as I'm concerned, um, 7.30 in the morning is open every day of the week. So I don't know whether there's, is there, are other days of the week easier? Tuesdays, Thursdays, um, is midweek be better? I'm just looking for, anyone to make comments on it because 
for me, we don't, it doesn't have to be a Wednesday. Tuesday and Thursday are difficult for me. Um, this is Allison, I'm sorry. Okay, uh, well, so Tuesday, Thursday are different. Wednesday's difficult. What about Mondays? Mike? Just with this many people who don't all have their calendars, I just wonder if, if everyone really commits to filling out a doodle poll, um, which is always the challenge with doodle polls, um, if maybe we could put some dates out, um, you know, um, you know, I don't know if Paul, if Angela is able to, to send something like that out, um, just that then at least we can get more consistency um, and people may not have to sure. voice in public meeting when they might have conflicts. That, that makes sense. Paul, you had your hand up. Yeah, I guess the first question is how the frequency of meetings say until now to the end of the year. Do we, Mike, do you think that we would need one meeting or two meetings before the end of the calendar year? Um, I would schedule one, you know, maybe for my opinion, early to mid, you know, that maybe the because of the holiday might, the first week of December might come really soon, but maybe the week after that. Um, and then at that meeting, we'll have, you know, probably the enrollment piece from MSBA to talk about um, and maybe some other topics. And we could sort of make that decision at that point. Um, December is a tough month because uh, if people aren't traveling, it's still, there's a, there's a lot of conflicts for a lot of people. Um, so. Okay, so we, we can send out a doodle poll for that second week in December and then also um, figure out a way of saying, is there a day of the week that would work better? So the doodle poll will give every day of that week as an option, but just let people have people tell us whether, you know, there's another day of the week that it turns out that everyone finds it would normally be okay. So we'll do that both by doodle poll. Steve? Yeah, so I'd be really happy if we could simply commit to a day of the week that works. So in other words, because as you, I don't know in all of your, your, you know, your lives, but for me, that just makes planning. So for me, the most important thing that I do pull is day of the week. Yeah, Paul. So I, I would suggest we choose um, either the ninth or the 16th because we have conflicts on every day of the week, basically. And then the doodle poll, let's choose, have the doodle poll choose which day of the week is best um, yeah. for everybody. And then, and then be able to go from there after the next meeting. And then we, and then we will anchor it in. That will be the day that we, we won't be. Ro I think it's too difficult to rotate days of the week. We'll, we'll, we'll have no, a we normal. Shouldn't, we shouldn't yeah. do that. Yeah. So I think I think that's it for today's meeting. Then correct? Yes. All right. So then uh, we. At least the committees I've been on, we can just all say we are adjourning and we will send you a doodle poll and hopefully have an enrollment report for next week. Uh, Steve, were you raising your hand with another or? Yeah, before we adjourn, um, if it's okay, if it pleases the chair, I think there was a comment earlier that I thought was uh, useful that it would be helpful, I think, for this committee if we could have a library where previous documents that are useful, like maybe a SharePoint site or whatever the best way of setting that up. So that could be everything from previous studies for that have been done. So many of us have seen those, and maybe all of us have seen those, but have those in one place. But then other useful information that comes in, you know, like um, articles that have been written or things like that. So committee members could put that there, you know, let's say rather than sending emails out, like, hey, this is a cool, you know, our study that's been elsewhere. But I think that'd be really useful. I, I can do a, um, you know, I can talk with uh, town staff. Um, I think SharePoint can't be shared if you're not on town, but uh, there might be a way we can do a Dropbox, a G Drive, and another protected space where those documents are. Paul? Yeah, I think we can work on that uh, between Mike and me. It's sort of, we have to make some decisions whether this lives on the school department's website or our website, the town's website. Um, and things like that so we want to and maybe there's links on both obviously but we should decide where this where people would think to look um, for this project and then be able to manage that through the websites okay so we will so next uh, next time we meet we will say whether we've been able to figure out how to do that and uh, commit to putting some documents in it
All right. So I think Jonathan, we are ready. Jonathan has his hand up. Jonathan just Tom, just a quick comment, just mostly to, to concur with Steve that, that, that this is good both for the committee members uh, because I really valued it uh, the last time having a single place to, to go to for documents. But I think it's also important for the public to have a place that they can both see past work and what we're working on uh, because uh, as has already been said in this uh, this meeting, communication is key. Um, and uh, the clearer our communication is both internally and externally uh, to, is to the project's benefit. Thanks. I totally agree. And I, I know how hard it is to find documents sometimes. You know it's got to be there someplace and you just keep doing searches and then the town clerk maybe sometimes can find it for you, but we'll try to make it easy. So are, are there any other comments before I uh, see whether there's consensus that we're adjourning? It, I don't see any physical hands up and I don't see any blue hands up. So I think um, we will adjourn. See you in a few weeks and happy Thanksgiving everyone, wherever you will be. <laughs> Bye.